So the first step is to make sure you're in the workspace directory. Arctic folder. And let's execute node Arctic light. And we're going to use a configuration file that sets up all the GPIO mapping. And in this case, we are going to use an Arctic 710. That's another required input to the config file to make sure that we have the right mapping. On executing this simple node script, it toggles the LED on and off. As you see, reports of LED called 1 or LED called false on the terminal screen, you can confirm the same on the interposer board. The red LED turns on and off. I'm going to kill the script by pressing Control C. Now let's have a quick view of what's in the Arctic light.js and config file. I'm going to use VI as my editor to open these files. In Arctic.js, you can see the script that reads values from the config file for the GPIO mapping. Similar to the hardware lab, it exports and sets the direction and keeps toggling the value with the timer as part of the script. Let's view the config file. The config file has a lot of pieces that are yet to be used by us, which we'll do in the cloud part. But the part that's important are the GPIO mappings based on the module. The same config file can also be used for an Arctic 510 board and has the mapping already listed for convenience. But in our case, we're looking at Arctic 710. So for example, GPIO 1 is number 28, which corresponds to the red LED. Through this simple exercise, we have demonstrated how from the hardware level, we have gone to software writing a simple script to control the GPIOs using Node. And we're going to build on the same concept and use Node to connect the light and switch to Arctic Cloud in the next chapter.